would just cry and then just start laughing like you <laughs> the Democrat Party does not own me. This is America. Freedom of speech. Duh. I watched it once. I watched it twice. And then I called the first lady over. I said, what do you think of this guy? I am not mentally ill. Now, Daily Wire may cut this one. <laughs> As a comedian, what makes me laugh is craziness. I just laugh at things that are just so outrageous. One of the craziest videos that I ever saw on social media was a lady reacting to me I did a parody GoFundMe for fried chicken. GoFundMe pages are directly for medical purposes, not for your freaking chicken addiction. He's taking this money and he's abusing it. Yes, for chickens, for his addiction of chickens. And I said, I need a dollar for a piece of fried chicken. And the reason why I was doing that parody is because someone made like $30,000 asking people to donate so they can make some potato salad. So I said, so I made a parody video about doing a GoFundMe for a piece of chicken. And this lady, this loony, this loony lady, she made a reaction video to my video complaining about chicken. And she said, Terrence K. Williams, has a freaking GoFundMe for fried chicken. I thought that was the funniest video ever. Like this woman was freaking out. Growing up in foster care, I had to learn to laugh. I learned to laugh at my situation. I had to. It was either cry all night or laugh all night. And I got tired of crying. I mean, I was crying. It, was, it, they, it started to become alligator tears. I was raised in uh, the foster care system. My mother and my father were unfortunately addicted to drugs and lost me and my siblings to the system. I don't remember the exact age I was in foster care, but I remember I started kindergarten in a foster home. So I knew I was pretty, pretty young. My siblings, they were in other homes. So we were separated, which was pretty hard because I wanted to be around people that I knew. It was difficult not having a mother in my life, not having a father in my life, living in children's shelters, and then bouncing back and forth from foster home to foster home. It was a moment where I didn't feel loved. It was one of the worst feelings that I've ever felt before. All I had was God. He got me through foster care, because without him, I probably would have lost my mind. It was a challenge for me not blame myself for what was going on in my life. So I had to learn that me being in the system is not my fault. And that's one thing I want all children, anyone who has been through foster care to know, that it is never your fault. And it was such a challenge just to get over that. But look at me now. I did it. That's one of the main reasons I wrote the book, From the Foster House to the White House, is because I want other people around the world to know that they can do it too. It is all about the American dream. He is some piece of work, this guy. He uh, was hitting Deborah Messing like she never got hit before. You promoted a message saying that black Trump supporters have a mental illness. I am not mentally ill. I have the right to vote for who I want to vote for. I have the right to think for myself. You do not own me. The Democrat Party does not own me, okay? Who do you think you are? This is America. The media is attacking him, but when they attack him, they are attacking us. Because he is out here fighting for us. Trump is my daddy. <laughs> Trump, please adopt me. You know what? Terrence K. Trump sounds really good. And give me one of those hotels. That'd be pretty nice. I have been a comedian all my life. So despite me going through hard times, I was always a clown. And in school, my teachers would call me motor mouth. Motor mouth, be quiet. Motor mouth, stop because I would talk so much and I have the entire class laughing. Laughing was medicine. Like going through all of the crazy stuff, through all of that trauma and all of the hard times, I had to laugh. I ain't crying all the time. Like I, I used to cry so much that I would just start laughing. Have you ever just cried and then just started laughing? Like you, 
<laughs> Cause sometimes you just have like some some things. I just realized my life is so crazy that I just said, you know what? I can't even cry anymore. I just have to laugh. What's up, Facebook? So I hear a lot of black people on Facebook talking about they want to move to Africa. I went viral on Facebook. It was my first time ever making a video. I only have a 30 minute lunch break. So time is flying. I'm on this video and I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna allow my fried chicken to get cold. So I'm about to eat my chicken while I make this video. Mm -mm. Mm. I saw a lot of comments on my timeline of people saying, we, the black people, should move back to Africa. And I'm thinking, move back? Back? I've never been to Africa. What you mean, move back? I've never been there. I don't even have a passport. How am I get there? And that's what I laugh at now, is just craziness. People just saying the dumbest things, doing the dumbest things. And people who have no common sense, <laughs> they make my day. Stop calling me African American. You can call me whatever you want, but I have never in my life been to Africa, so please don't call me African American. I know a lot of white people, y'all ancestors are from uh, Europe. I don't call y'all European American, so don't call me African American. I speak for a lot of people, so when I'm speaking, people feel like I'm speaking for them also, so they are starting to feel heard, like, okay, somebody understands, somebody is saying, what I've been wanting to say, but I can't say it. You know, a lot of, and the thing is, me being a comedian, I can say what I want. Freedom of speech, duh. But a lot of people feel like they can't say what they want. They will get accused of being full of hatred, but I can say things that certain people can't say. And people ask me, well, Terrence, how do you feel about all these white people that follow you? I don't care if you're white following me. I don't care if you're black. Hispanic, I don't care what color, I'm not looking at, I'm not going on my on my follower list looking at all the, looking at the color of people. When I announced my support for Trump, people lost their minds. If people start calling me a cool, Uncle Tom, whitewashed, I thought I would have the support of the people who look like me. I'm gonna have my back, but that's when I learned that, you know what, race, color has nothing to do with it. There are some crazy people out here on both sides. A familiar face at breakfast for more than a century will soon be a thing of the past. Quaker Oats, which is owned by Pepsi, announcing that they're getting rid of the 130-year-old Aunt Jemima brand, famous for pancake mixes, maple syrup, and other breakfast foods. I didn't know that it was racist to eat Aunt Jemima. I've been eating this all my life. I never tasted racism ever eating these pancakes. Let me just see what this tastes like. And coming soon, I have my own pancake mix coming out called Cousin T's Pancakes. They canceled Aunt Jemima. That was one of the most devastating times ever because we all loved Aunt Jemima. They didn't have to take the woman's face off the box. They didn't have to take the woman's name off the box. She was a legend. She brought all of us together. White people, black people, brown people. We all loved her. We all ate her pancakes and they took it away from us because of council culture. So I have my own mix now called Cousin T's Pancakes. And you cannot cancel Cousin T.